things will never be the same again. It is finally here and I have spent every spare minute I have testing it. And I'm not just talking about testing it at home because over the last week, this thing has followed me literally everywhere. Very fast recap of what this actually is because, well, there are plenty of other videos out there that cover that. This is the PlayStation Portal. It's basically a dual sense controller with an 8 inch LCD screen shoved in the middle. It streams whatever's playing on your PlayStation 5 via your home Wi Fi or over the internet using PlayStation's remote play system. The screen isn't OLED. There's no Bluetooth audio, there is a 3.5mm audio jack, and Sony's overpriced PlayStation Link audio hardware will be out soon. It feels great. It's well balanced, not too heavy, there's no strain on your thumbs, hand or wrist, the screen is bright and responsive, and although I think it would have benefited from being OLED, I soon forgot about that. The UI is simple to navigate, there are hardly any settings to bother with at all, and the device was easy to set up. It took about 15 minutes or so after the initial power on to get all of the updates installed and link it to the PS5. The battery seems to last approximately 5-6 to six hours, depending on what kind of game is running. The more the haptic feedback activates, the quicker the battery drains. I am looking at you, Gran Turismo 7. The sound quality? Not great. No issues with the volume, but the speakers do sound a bit tinny, especially when the volume is high. And even though I felt like I was stepping back in time a decade, I actually found the best audio experience to be with an old pair of Apple earphones. I'd have loved to have used my Bluetooth ones, but Sony said no to that. Now, hardware specs are all well and good, but I'm most interested in experience and convenience. I bought this so I could enjoy playing my PlayStation 5 games whilst on the sofa in the company of my wife or my kids, as well as being able to take it with me when I'm out and about. I want to be able to pick it up, turn it on and just start playing in a few seconds without having to necessarily fiddle around with accessories and settings. So onto the real world questions. How well does it perform? How stable and reliable is it? How much difference is there between using it at home and being out and about? And ultimately, does the portal offer a better experience than just playing on your phone or other devices via the free app? Let's start with playing at home, because this should be where the portal shines. However, first we need to spend just a minute talking about networks. I know. It's not the most exciting thing, but it is important. You've probably already seen that there has been a real clashing of opinions about the PlayStation Portal's performance, even at home. That's because we all have different network hardware, different configurations and different environmental factors. For transparency, my PlayStation is plugged into my router or router via an Ethernet cable. I have three wireless access points around the house, two of which are connected via one of these LAN over power plugs, which provide solid mesh Wi-Fi coverage across all three floors. The portal connects to my 5 GHz Wi-Fi with an average latency of 1.2 milliseconds when in close proximity to the router. Or, in other rooms, when connected to one of the access points, the average latency is about 6 milliseconds. In terms of Wi-Fi signal strength, the portal is usually connected at around minus 50 decibel milliwatts, or dBm for short. As a rule of thumb, anything around minus 50 is pretty much excellent, and up to minus 67 should be fine too. So, with that out of the way, onto the interesting stuff. No matter where I am in the house, the experience remains very consistent. There is no noticeable input lag, I've not had a single disconnection, and the stream quality has never dropped. Honestly, it just feels exactly like I'm playing on the PlayStation 5. I've been nothing but impressed with it. I've tried a bunch of different game types, and all of them have been great. Now, my days of serious competitive play are well and truly behind me, 
but games like Fortnite and Overwatch 2 still felt perfectly responsive. The only problems that I encountered playing either of those games were very much my own making and it didn't take long before I switched back to something that I'm not so terrible at. Or not. With the console in rest mode, it takes about 25 seconds to boot and become ready to play. If the console is already on and you've just turned the portal off for a brief moment, it'll only take 2-3 to three seconds. Really, the portal has been an absolute dream when at home especially when I've only had 15 minutes here or there to get a quick race in or a nightmare dungeon before taking the kids to school. And then there was Sunday. Sunday morning I got to lie in bed for an hour or so with a cup of tea playing the portal and it was amazing. It was exactly what I hoped it would be when I first saw it advertised. Oh he's dead, he's dead. Over the years, I've used PlayStation's remote play a lot, mainly with a DualSense controller and a laptop. Hand on heart, I can't honestly say that the remote play performance is any better on the portal, but what I can say is that it does feel a lot more convenient. And as I mentioned earlier, that was one of my top priorities. So a strong start for the portal in and around the house, but what about when you're away from home? Well, again, we have to start with a little bit of a caveat. Home networking nuances are one thing, but public and private Wi-Fi are entirely different beasts. And then you have mobile data, which is almost Wild West territory, so just be mindful that my results may differ from yours, and that when you're using other people's networks or a hotspot, that you're really rolling the dice in terms of network connection quality. Also keep in mind that my router is configured with port forwarding rules to allow remote play to run as smoothly as possible when away from home. I have a video on how to do that, which you can find here, possibly there, I can never remember, and in the description below. First up was McDonald's, and let me just start with an immediate recommendation because if you have a portal, or you're thinking of getting one, buy a case too. I hadn't bought one and was carrying mine around in my laptop bag, wrapped up in my son's pyjama top. It wasn't ideal, I have since ordered one. Anyway, as I was connecting up, I immediately hit a significant stumbling block. The portal discovers McDonald's free Wi-Fi, just fine, but it will not connect to it. Each time it attempts to, it comes up with this error about something going wrong. However, what's actually going wrong is that there's no built-in web browser on the portal and McDonald's, much like most public Wi-Fi spots, require you to log into their network before you can actually use it. Now, I assume that the reason for this is to reduce the likelihood that the portal will be hacked and jailbroken. But whatever the reason, this is a problem. I tested a bunch of different public Wi-Fi's and didn't find a single one that just allowed me to connect without first having to agree to some terms, create an account or sign in. So that means if you want to play on your portal, let's say an overly expensive coffee shop, McDonald's, a library, the airport, or say at a hospital, you can't use their wireless. Not directly, at least. I didn't realise this until that trip to McDonald's, but the Google Pixel phone allows you to configure it as a hotspot while still connected to Wi-Fi, essentially turning the phone into a wireless repeater. Most other phones won't allow you to do that and will force you to switch to mobile data in order to create the hotspot. Either way, you're not going to have any joy connecting to public Wi-Fi and whatever Sony's reasoning may be, this seems like a bad decision for the consumer. So after I set my phone up as a hotspot, still using McDonald's Wi-Fi, I was finally able to test the portal while enjoying a cheeseburger. I did a speed test first, which showed a download speed of 32 megabytes per second, an upload of seven and a latency of 44 milliseconds. It took about 40 seconds or so to wake the PlayStation up back at home, but once it was connected, it was game time. The first few seconds were quite laggy, but I'm putting that down to McDonald's Wi-Fi just needing to kind of organise itself because after that, the experience was very smooth. I even had a member of staff asking about it and commenting on the quality of the stream. 
There was a little input lag and it wasn't quite as responsive as it was back at home, but why would it be? After all, the connection had to travel over many more network hops than just the one that it would at home. Plus, I was sharing that connection with all the other people in the restaurant. The connection warning symbol showed up on the portal just once and that was only for a brief second. Overall, the performance was perfectly acceptable and I could have quite happily carried on playing Spider-Man 2 without any foreseeable issues. I must admit, not being able to connect to public Wi-Fi had scuppered some of my plans for testing. So, just to be sure, I tried again at a local library and encountered the exact same issue. So, I did as before, I hotspotted the Wi-Fi from my phone, which worked okay, and had a very similar gameplay experience as I did at McDonald's. In terms of testing, that really only left me with external private Wi-Fi and mobile data. I wanted to test a few different locations with varying speed test results, mainly to check if the 15 megabytes per second minimum that Sony states is actually realistic. First up with the mobile data test was the middle of a local town. The speed test results from here were 18 megabytes per second down, 3.6 up and a latency of 42 milliseconds. This wasn't too far off that 15 megabytes per second minimum, and whilst I didn't suffer any actual disconnections, I did get quite a few network warning messages. But the most noticeable issue by far was the input lag. It was a good half second between pressing a button on the controller and it activating within the game. I'd say it was probably a 70-30 split, where 70% of the time the gameplay was okay, but 30% really wasn't playable. And obviously that's way too much, so after a short time I got frustrated and had to give up on it. Next up was a local park, which wasn't quite as busy and wasn't surrounded by buildings. The speed test results there measured at 27 megabytes per second down, 4.3 up and a latency of 45 milliseconds. The connection here, although not that much faster, was more stable, which resulted in a noticeable improvement in stream quality and a reduction in input lag. I managed to bash out a few levels on Streets of Rage 2 with only a few network warning symbols. I moved around the park a bit and retested at each location, the portal maintained its connection to the hotspot throughout and provided a stable connection to the PS5 back at home. It wasn't always totally perfect, but in general I found it to be more than acceptable. I really wanted to test the portal in a place where I thought that it would struggle. So I took it with me, still wrapped in that pyjama top, on a hike in the middle of nowhere. I got right to the top, and whilst having a small heart attack from the physical exertion, I soon then had another one, because when I ran the speed test, to my utter amazement, I was getting nearly 100 megabytes per second down, 60 up, and a 38 millisecond ping. Now, for context, those speeds are significantly better than my own internet connection at home, but I certainly hadn't hiked all that way just to turn back without trying it. So I sat down, enabled the hotspot and turned on the portal. Sitting on that rock in those beautiful surrounds on my own in the middle of nowhere, playing on the portal was an experience I will never forget. I was only meant to do a quick test and do a couple of quick shots on the drone, but I ended up staying there for almost three hours. I only left because my battery was dying and my fingers were about to fall off from the cold. As you might expect, with those speeds, the connection was about as perfect as one could hope for outside of home. I had no disconnections at all, and within that three hour period, I only got a couple of connection warning symbols. There was no noticeable input lag, and really, the only problem I had was that I chose Spider-Man 2 as the first game to try, and swinging around New York and falling from great heights did not mix well with my precarious seating position. Not my best idea. All in all though, this had been by far the best gaming experience I'd had on the portal outside of home. My final mobile data tests both involved being in the car. The first one was while I was waiting in a supermarket car park for my wife to nip in to get a few things for dinner. We've been together long enough now for me to know what that really means, so I activated the hotspot and got connected. 
The speed test results from here were 22 megabytes per second down, 30 up and a latency of 39 milliseconds. By this time, with those connection speeds, I already knew more or less what to expect. The connection was fine, input lag was minor but occasionally noticeable, and as long as I wasn't attempting to play anything competitive, the performance was perfectly acceptable. Now, up until this point, I hadn't had a single full disconnection, which I thought was pretty impressive. And then I tried to play as a passenger in a moving vehicle, which was basically a disaster. In a 25 minute journey, I managed to play for probably no more than about six minutes. And those six minutes were not what I would call smooth or enjoyable. So unless you're traveling on something like a bus with its own Wi-Fi and you happen to be using a Google Pixel phone, or you're traveling in an area with excellent 4 or 5G, you can forget playing on the portal whilst commuting. So far, we've covered playing at home, on public Wi-Fi, and via mobile data, which really just leaves private Wi-Fi away from home, which meant a trip to the in-laws. Their speed test results came in at 38 megabytes per second down, 14 up, and a latency of 19 milliseconds. They have a standard Vodafone router, which is set up with its default settings out of the box. In terms of performance, there was no noticeable input lag, the stream quality didn't drop, and I didn't get any network performance warnings. My only real issue, once again, was that I'd tried to play a game that I hadn't picked up in ages and was more than a little rusty at. Which brings me to my final test, corporate Wi-Fi. Again, each organization will have its own network config and the way that our network is set up meant that I flat out could not establish a connection to the PlayStation from the office. The firewall rules were blocking the connection and I'd imagine that this will be the case for a lot of people trying to connect from work. So just to test, I set up an alternative wireless network, still using that same internet connection with its own firewall rules. This then allowed the connection from the portal to the PlayStation to be established. The internet connection there is often working close to capacity with a large number of devices connected to it. The speed test results are 42 megabytes per second down, six up and a ping of 10 milliseconds. With the sheer number of other devices on the network, I wasn't expecting the performance to be fantastic. But actually, I was pleasantly surprised. I couldn't test for long because I didn't want to add to the already congested network, but the gameplay was smooth with very little input lag. I did get the connection warning symbol once or twice, but no lag spikes and no disconnections. All in all, it was a very good experience and much better than I had expected. So a bit of a mixed bag went out and about, and if we're being honest, that's kind of what you would expect really, simply because of the number of variables. I'd say that with good speeds and a stable connection, the portal generally works just fine. Yeah, there are moments of lag and occasional drops in stream quality, but as long as you're not trying to play something like Call of Duty or FIFA, they really aren't a problem. The biggest disappointment for me is the inability to connect to public Wi-Fi networks that lie behind a landing page, which is basically all of them. I don't know if this is something that Sony could change, but even if it was, they aren't exactly known for being swayed into doing things that they don't want to do. So out and about, the portal is okay. Definitely not perfect, but if you're fortunate enough to have a solid connection, you should be in for a decent time. In the introduction to this video, I asked four questions. How well does the PlayStation portal perform? How stable and reliable is it? How much difference is there between playing at home and being out and about? And does the portal offer a better experience than just playing via your phone or whatever else on the free app? Well, at home, in terms of performance, stability and reliability, it's truly excellent. I couldn't be any happier with it. And as I just mentioned, when out and about, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Wherever you're playing from, you must get the network side of things right, whether that's your Wi-Fi at home, somebody else's Wi-Fi, or using mobile data. In terms of comparing the portal to what's already available, in all honesty, 
each one of my tests would have had the exact same results using the free Remote Play app. There just isn't a noticeable difference at all. So it really all comes down to user experience and convenience. And yeah, if you've already got a Steam Deck, this probably isn't bringing much else to the table. But if like me, you've been using Remote Play on a phone, laptop, tablet or PC, then I'd say this is well worth the money just for the improvement in convenience. I know it's only saving a few seconds here and there, and there isn't a massive difference between a dedicated device and using a DualSense controller with a laptop, but it's a big enough difference for me. I have absolutely loved using it over the last week and being able to play on the sofa, in bed, at work, or in the middle of nowhere has been bloody brilliant. For me, it's taken pick up and play to a whole new level. I'm sure that as Sony collects customer feedback from its users, there will be some changes and improvements to come. Personally, I'd really like to see an option to change the battery level indicator from those little bars to an actual percentage number. I'd also really like for them to include a little network test utility in the settings to help people figure out why they might not be getting the best experience. And of course, I'd love it if they would allow connections to public Wi-Fi that requires a login. I'll keep my fingers crossed for that one, but I won't hold my breath. So it's a big thumbs up from me, having quickly become a part of my everyday gaming life. Please let me know what you think in the comments section below because it certainly seems to have been a divisive bit of tech. I'm especially interested if anyone has had issues with HDR and dropped frames as that's something I've read about a few times but haven't experienced myself. Thank you for your time and a special thank you to anybody that has liked, commented or subscribed. It means a lot.